I'm Shandi. ये आठ फरवरी 2022 की मोरली के ऊपर कुछ विचार हैं। बाबा का एक रेगुलर टॉपिक होता है कि बच्चे क्यों इतनी भक्ति करने के बाद गिरते आए हैं? तुम उपरधान क्यों बने हो? विचार करो तो हजारों साल हम सब भक्ति करके आए हैं। कितनी भक्ति की होंगी तो भी मुक्ति तो नहीं मिला ना जीवन मुक्ति नहीं मिली पाप का बोझ तो बढ़ता गया तम प्रदान होते गए वो प्रैक्टिकल जीवन भी साधारण होता गया ना स्ट्रगल होता गया वो दुनिया के हालत भी तो हम सब जानते हैं वो भी गिरते गए भारत में तो सबसे जास्ती भक्ति चली है आदि मध्यांत तो भी भारत की हालत तो देखो सबसे जास्ती पॉवर्टी सबसे जास्ती भ्रष्टाचार तो बाबा समझाते हैं कि और जवाब देता है कि क्यों भक्ति डिडन वर्क क्यों नहीं सफल हुई तो आज बाबा समझा रहा है कि बच्चे तुम्हारी बुद्धि शिव बाबा के साथ लगी हुई नहीं रही बाबा समझाया करता है कि दुआ पर के शुरुआत में सारी दुनिया में केवल एक शिव एक निराकार शिव की अविभिचारी भक्ति थी आप बच्चे उस समय हीरे के शिवलिंगम बनाते थे और उनको याद करते थे तो आपको बहुत प्राप्ति उस समय मिलती थी क्योंकि आपकी बुद्धि केवल एक शिव से लगी हुई रहती थी परंतु वो बहुत समय ऐसे नहीं चला और फिर आप व्यभिचारी बनते गए तो फिर हम अनेक भगवान को याद करने लगे हैं तो बाबा समझा रहा है नेक्स्ट लेवल है ब्रह्मा विष्णु शंकर वास्तव में शिव शंकर कहते ना परंतु शिव वास्तव में त्रिमूर्ति के अंदर नहीं दिखाना चाहिए क्योंकि शिव तो परमपिता परमात्मा है वो हायर लेवल है तो उनको ऊपर दिखाना चाहिए और वो है करण करावनार वो है सारे सृष्टि का बीज रूप तो उनकी एनर्जी उनका वाइब्रेशन हाईएस्ट है वो ही सर्व को प्राप्ति देने वाला है जो भी विशेषता आत्मा के अंदर है वो सब बाबा से प्राप्त की हुई है बाबा ही बीज है बाबा ही दाता है तो ऐसा लिया महिमा सारी उनकी ही है फिर होता है ब्रह्मा और विष्णु तो भक्ति में तो विष्णु को खास इस सृष्टि के साथ कनेक्शन दिखलाता है मेजॉरिटी तो विष्णु का ही अवतार दिखाते हैं वो समझते हैं कि हर युग में कोई न कोई रूप में विष्णु अवतरित होता है कभी कभी कृष्ण कभी कभी राम कभी नरसिंह कभी मछली के रूप कभी दूसरा रूप ऐसे भिन्न भिन्न रूप में विष्णु का अवतरण दिखाते हैं तो बाबा समझाया करता है कि विष्णु कौन तो वास्तव में मम्मा और बाबा की आत्माएं ये दोनों भगवन भगवती हैं शिव बाबा भगवान है ठीक है भगवान माना परम पिता परमात्मा शिव निराकार शिव और फिर मम्मा और बाबा ये है भगवान भगवती तो भगवान नहीं है परंतु भगवान भगवती है तो इसलिए भगवान श्री नारायण और भगवती श्री लक्ष्मी तो मम्मा बाबा आदम बीबी 
वो फिर लक्ष्मी नारायण तो आदि देव आदि देवी ठीक है तो ये दोनों पेरेंट आत्मा ही है इस सृष्टि का तो उनका बार बार ऊपर से अवतरण नहीं हो विष्णुपुरी से बार बार अवतरण नहीं होते हैं लेकिन विष्णु के चौरासी जन्म होते हैं निराकार शिव पुनर्जन्म रही थे वो कोई जन्म लेता ही नहीं है ना जन्मता है ना मरता है उनका तो दिव्य जन्म अवतरण होता है तो शिव के मंदिर में ऐसे बैल की अंश थोड़ा जैसे शिवलिंग और बैल दिखाएंगे तो क्या है कि बस थोड़ा ही अंश रह गए ना बाकी तो इसका मतलब क्या है वो तो कुछ बुद्धि में नहीं रहा है ज्ञान का सागर कैसे ब्रह्मा तो इसलिए बैल की सवारी दिखाते हैं गई की सवारी नहीं दिखाते हैं बैल की सवारी दिखाते हैं क्योंकि ब्रह्मा बाबा मेल था नहीं तो इसलिए यह निशानी है बाकी शिव बाबा के साथ किसी का योग रीली तो नहीं है और फिर देखो नेक्स्ट लेवल है विष्णु का परंतु विष्णु पुनर्जन्म लेता तो विष्णु का छोबे अवतार नहीं है लेकिन चौरियासी जन्म है और जिन्होंने कोई भी जन्म में मम्मा बाबा को मिला है उनके साथ संपर्क हुआ है कोई भी जन्म में तो वो तो बहुत भाग्यशाली क्योंकि विष्णु के चौरासी जन्म में कोई ना कोई संपर्क तो हुआ फिर नेक्स्ट लेवल है धर्म पिताओं का तो वो भी बहुत पावरफुल आत्मा ही है उनमें धर्म स्थापन करने की शक्ति है उन पर भी शिव बाबा की महिमा लगा देते हैं कि वो मुक्ति दिलवा सकते हैं निर्वाण पहुंचा सकते हैं स्वर्ग में पहुंचा सकते हैं पाप माफ कर सकते हैं तो बाबा समझाया करता है कि धर्म पिताओं में ये शक्तियां नहीं है परंतु धर्म स्थापन करने की शक्ति उनकी पालना करने की शक्ति तो सुदेश दीदी समझाया करती थी कि ये धर्म पिताएं सृष्टि का ब्रेक से क्योंकि देवता वाम मार्ग में आ जाते हैं ना द्वापर युग में तो सारी सृष्टि गिरती कला में आ जाती है तो रावण भारत का सबसे बड़ा दुश्मन है और क्या हुआ है कि हम गिरते जाते हैं और हमारी भक्ति भी व्यभिचारी होती जाती है तो ये सब धर्म पिता हमारी गिरती कला में थोड़ा ब्रेक लगा दे तो जितने जल्दी हम गिर रहे थे हम उतने जल्दी नहीं गिरे तो पहले इब्राहिम आता है क्योंकि हम व्यभिचारी बोल जाते हैं तो ये सब धर्म पिता मेजोरिटी एक ही भगवान में मानते हैं तो हम सब का बुद्धि ऊपर फिर से इसे गाइड करते हैं दो इब्राहिम ने सब मूर्तियों को तोड़ तोड़ा था ना कि ये सब झूठे हैं भगवान तो निराकार देखो प्रॉफिट मोहम्मद मुसलमान लोग भी मूर्ति में नहीं मानेंगे वो तो ऊपर बुद्धि रखेंगे ना अल्लाह में और फिर क्राइस्ट ने भी ऊपर सबका ध्यान खींचवाया गुरु नानक ने एक कोम का निराकार बाबा मुरली में भी वर्णन करता है तो धर्म पिताओं ने हम सबकी बुद्धि ऊपर फिर से लेके गए बाकी हम सुनते तो नहीं हैं यही बुद्धि लटकाते हैं परंतु फिर भी ब्रेक उन्होंने लगाया और कई धर्म पिताओं ने पवित्रता का महत्व जैसे क्राइस्ट बुद्ध शंकर आदि शंकर ये सब उन्होंने पवित्रता का भी महत्व रखा है नहीं तो हम बहुत 
گرتے جا رہے تھے پھر چوتھا انرجی ہوتا ہے پرکرتی کی تو موسٹ کامن بھکتی سارے پانچوں ہی کھنڈ میں موسٹ کامن بھکتی اتنی سینچریز میں سوریہ کا رہا ہے آپ ہر دیش میں جائیں گے سوریہ کی بھکتی ہوئی ہے جیسے ایجپٹ کا بہت بڑا سولائزیشن تھا ان کا بھی مکھیا بھگوان سوریا تھا را ان کو را کہتے تھے تو یہ آپ جانتے ہو کہ یہ سارے جو پلانٹ ہے سوریہ کی شکتی پر ہی چل رہا ہے یہ سب ویجیٹیبلز جو ٹریز ہیں سب وہ ان کا پتے سے سوریہ کی کرنیں پتے کھینچتی ہیں اور اس سے شوگر بنا دیتی ہے اور اس شوگر سے پلانٹ کا وردھی ہوتی ہے پھر ہم پلانٹ کھاتے ہیں تو ہمیں سوریہ کی انرجی پلانٹ دوارا ملے اور جو اینیملز میٹ کھاتے ہیں تو جو اینیملز جو کھاتے ہیں انہوں نے ویجیٹیبلز کھائے اور وہ ویجیٹیبلز تو سوریہ کی شکتی سے بنی تو میٹ میں بھی سوریہ کی شکتی ان اینیملز کے لیے ملتی ہے تو سارا یہ پرکرتی سوریہ کے آدھار پر ہی ہے تو اس لیے سوریہ کی بھکتی ویسے تو جیسے کل بابا نے پانی کو یاد کیا تو پانی میں بھی ہر تتو میں شکتی ہوتی ہے پر تو سب کچھ چلتا ہے سوریہ کے آدھار پر تو اس لیے ہم سمجھ سکتے ہیں کہ کیوں سوریہ کی بھکتی اتنی چلی ہے اتوا اور تتو کی پرنتو وہ بھگوان نہیں ہے وہ تو پرکرتی کی شکتی ہے تو پرماتما نہیں ہے پرنتو ان میں یہ اس سرشتی کی شکتی ہے پرکرتی کا اپنا اپنا پاور ہے تو بابا سب سپریٹ کرتا ہے پرماتما نراکار شو وشنو دھرم پتا اور پرکرتی اور پھر بابا سمجھایا کرتا ہے کہ ساری مہیما ایک ہی نراکار شو تو اپنی بدھی ان کے ساتھ رکھنا ہے تو وکرم بناش تو مکتی تو جیون مکتی نہیں تو اور کسی سے نہیں مل سکتی ہے تو یہی ہماری بھول رہی تو اب بھی شب بابا سے خزانہ بھرتے جانا ہے اور شب بابا زیرو ہے بندو ہے تو ملٹی پلائی کرتا ہے تو بابا کہاں کہتا ہے میرے سے لیو وہ دوسروں کو بانٹتے چلو بابا کا گیان بابا کا خزانہ گون شکتی اپنی چیز نہیں ہوتی یہ تو بابا کی چیز ہے تو ہم سب کو بس نمت بننا ہے ٹرسٹی رہنا ہے اور دوسروں کو شب بابا کا خزانہ بانٹتے چلنا ہے تو ہمیں کمیشن مل جائیں گے تو ہم کو بھی فائدہ ان کو بھی فائد ہم شنتی ہم شنتی these are some thoughts on the morning of the 8th of February 2022 one of Baba's main regular themes of the moralies is answering a question that we might have in our mind which is that how come despite doing so much bhakti for so many centuries, did we not attain liberation or liberation in life, or even really improved our circumstance? This pi- picture of the staircase shows us that bhakti does not work. We continue to descend. And so today Baba is answering that in probably probably highlighting the main factor which is that we were worshiping the wrong gods if you think about it baba explains to us that at the start of the copper age we perform what he calls unadulterated devotion of shiva so the only bhakti occurring in the world at that time is of one incorporeal shiva 
and he talks about us making diamond shivalingams, like oval, diamond oval images, and we were basically meditating on that, and our experience was very, very good. We had a lot of attainment at that time. So where a person is directly connecting with incorporeal shiva, then the attainment is very good. And then over time, Baba says, we become adulterated in our remembrance, which means we have a mixture, we have many gods. So today Baba is separating the different levels of energy because what we have done is we have scattered our intellect around. And in Bhakti over the centuries we've lost the distinction between the different levels of souls, the different types of energy. So first of all, Baba says that the highest energy of all is the Supreme Father, the Supreme Soul, Shiva. Incorporeal Shiva should not be shown as part of the Hindu trinity. So Shiva shouldn't really be there. He is on the level above that. He is the source of all spiritual treasures. He is the ocean of knowledge. And Baba is saying that if you go to a Shiva temple, you've just got like a trace of understanding of who Shiva is. There's not really much left now in terms of really understanding who Shiva is. They might have a Shiva Lingam. They might show the picture. Uh, an Im they might have an image of a bull that Shiva rode a bull. But that doesn't really tell you much, does it? because Shiva is in fact the ocean of knowledge and he takes the support of a male, so the bull rather than a cow is symbolized, but what meaning do you get from that? So who is Shiva? And then Shiva and Shankar have been combined over the centuries. So again, when people think of Shiva, they're not really thinking about incorporeal Shiva. So that's that first understanding, that the highest on high, the one who is Karavanhar, the one who is the source for every other soul. All other souls are taking from this one. So he is the supreme, he is the seed. And so Brahma Bhav always says, you can only really praise him. And he is the one who imbues, who shares all of these attainments into us, and then we express them down here. And then the next level you have is that level of Brahma Vishnu. And Vishnu in Hinduism is depicted as the main god that incarnates. So they might believe that he incarnates 10 times or 24 times. And they might believe that he incarnates in every age of the cycle. But he is the main one. So they show him from up above in his realm, Vishnu Puri, his realm of Vishnu, that he comes in different forms down here. So they would say that Krishna is an incarnation of Vishnu, Rama is an incarnation of Vishnu. And Hindus, they would even accept people like Buddha and Christ. They would Some Hindus will say they are also incarnations of Vishnu. So this is the way in which they depict it. There are also some animal forms, so they have a story similar to Noah's Ark and Vishnu incarnates as a fish that grows and becomes a huge fish. So at the time of destruction, when the flooding occurs, this huge fish pulls 
everyone to safety. That's that sort of story. So, in this way, Vishnu is depicted as connected with this world more and incarnating in different forms. So Baba explains that actually Vishnu is the soul of Brahma Baba and the soul of Mama. And it's like a combined form, image of them. So they are not God with a capital G, but they are a God and Goddess with a small g. And so Vishnu <coughs> is this combined form of Adam and Eve. So these two are parent souls of humanity. And it's not that they keep incarnating down from up above, but they incarnate into the golden age. Mama becomes Lakshmi. Brahma Baba becomes Narayan. And then this god and goddess, <clears throat> they continue to take a rebirth down here. So it's not 24 incarnations of Vishnu, but it's the 84 births of Vishnu. So they've, you can see how they've captured it, that Vishnu comes in different names and forms. But Baba explains that it's actually these 84 births. So any soul that interacts with them in any of those 84 births, they're very fortunate because these two souls are a god and goddess in a human form, in a practical form down here. And then the next level are the religious fathers. And... Actually, the different religions have wrestled with whether their religious father is a god, is he an incarnation of God, or is he a human being. You find this sort of philosophical wrestling going on in the different faiths. And I think over time, they just begin to think that, well, they're really a god, and, and they... They worship them. The average devotee just worships, because I don't think they think so much. But um, there are these types of beliefs. So some might think, well, Christ is like the Son of God, and Christ is a human form. There'll be different perspectives. But we also project and transfer a lot of Shiv Baba's powers onto these religious fathers. We think that they can forgive our sins, that they can take us to liberation, they can take us to heaven, they can take us to nirvana. But Baba explains to us that their power is to establish a religion and they influence this world a great deal. They sustain so many souls as well. So they actually used to explain it like they were each a break for humanity. So it begins with Abraham, and then you've got Buddha and Christ and Prophet Muhammad and so on. So you see that they're spaced out, really. And humanity is falling. Like Baba says, that the vices are your great enemy. And also, we have tended to become very polytheistic. So these religious fathers, they're mainly monotheistic. They take our intellect back up to one God. Whereas we've become quite scattered down here. And also, we've begun using the vices a lot more. So, our attention on spirituality, our attention on purity, these things are lost to us. So these religious fathers, they come and they apply a break. And it means that we don't fall as much as we would have done. And we also fall slower. 
than we would have done. So they have their own power. And then we also project Shababa's qualities onto nature. Probably the most common worship in the world through the centuries has been the worship of the sun. Right around the continents, you will see civilizations that were sun worshippers. Uh, you think of the great civilization of Egypt and they worship Ra, but you go right the way around, you will find that. And um, this word Surya, you'll hear it, it's a very common name as well. So Surya, that means sun. S W O R Y A. And Baba explains that actually the sun, the moon, the stars, these are all part of nature. And nature has its own energy. Yesterday, Baba was talking about water, and we know that water has this energy. And of course, in this world, everything is based on the sun. Uh, we are the Goldilocks planet, and we just have the right amount of sun, we're the right distance from the sun, so plants can grow, and those plants turn the sunshine into glucose and release oxygen, then we heat the plants, and we, so indirectly, and then meat-eating animals, they eat the meat of the animals that are plants, and those plants took their energy from the sun, so everything in this planet is based on the energy of the sun. So you can see why the sun has been worshipped. But we have to understand these are the powers of nature. So everything in this world, nature is remarkable. And it has its own power, has its own energy. But... We have to understand that the Supreme Father, the Supreme Soul, Shiva, is separate. And our intellect needs to be connected up there in order for the soul to be purified, in order for us to access Shabbat's treasures, and in order for our sins to be forgiven. So this is why Baba breaks it all down. And you see, with a lot of Hindu mentality, they just accept multiple gods. So even if a Christian doesn't see Christ as God, but maybe sees him as a son of God, but a Hindu will just say, oh yeah, Christ is God, he's an incarnation of Vishnu. And then even if a Buddhist doesn't see Buddha as God, but a Hindu might say, oh yeah, Buddha is God, he's an incarnation of Vishnu. Oh, what about the sun? Oh yes, that is also Vishnu. If someone worships Radhe, they'll say, wherever I look, I do, yeah, it's Radhe. Who created this mountain? Oh, Radhe created. Who, who built this building? Radhe is with blessing. Uh, who created this body? Radhe is in the body. And so this is the way in which the Hindu devotee just thinks. And so this is why Baba patiently breaks it all down and he explains to us that now you have to take just from Shababa's energy you if you take from all these multiple energies you become scattered and depleted but if you concentrate onto the seed onto the point then your energy is pure and you will access and you'll become re-empowered and in today's blessing, Baba is saying to us, take treasures from Shabbaba and then carry on using them. So Confluence Age is an opportunity. And Shabbaba is the decimal point. He is the zero. So he multiplies everything for us. So we've just got to carry on sharing. None of Shabbaba's treasures belong to us. Uh, we are just like trustees and instruments. We just pass them on. But we gain the like the commission for doing that, so we get good karma for doing that. So that's why Baba gives us the treasures. We then use them. Good for us. Good for others. 
but ultimately it all comes from the sun of knowledge. Om Shanti.